always something going on over here. I've got some big windows in my living room that I've been wanting to put some curtains up for quite a while now. I, I found some curtains on sale, but when I started to look for the hardware, it started getting expensive because I've got uh, one, two, three windows. So I thought to myself, maybe I can come up with something that would look good and maybe save a few bucks. So what I did was I made some of these brackets up. I made two of them so far. Now, these are very popular right now, this style for, for windows. You drill a hole in here, and the curtain rod, of course, goes through there. But these aren't limited to windows. You can use these on fireplace mantles, you know, where the fireplace would overhang that, or the mantle would. Uh, what else could you do? These are great for countertop overhangs. If you've got a bar that overhangs, you can make a shelf unit. You get two of them like that and set that on there. Oh, let, you, let your imagination go wild. But anyway, I'll show you how I made it. Basically, I came up with a pattern. I went online and looked at some of them to get an idea of what the shapes were. And then I came down to my shop. I kind of drew it out. So this is what I got. So let's get busy. Okay, the first step was I glued up uh, some of these 2 by 8s I just rough cut them to the length and glued them to, together. And then I'm going to take them over to my joiner and get one edge straight, and then I'll rip it down nice and square and cut it off at the top uh, on the uh, chop saw and table saw. Let me show you. Now we've got our basic block set here. Now, now we're going to put our pattern on there. Now, of course, I can take the one that I already have and just kind of copy it. But I'm going to show you how I came up with this, and uh, it might help you while you're making your patterns. Now, I kind of looked at them, like I said, in, in photos like this to see what the basic shape was. So I kind of copied that exact thing freehand. Okay. And so I look at it and I see if I like it or not. If I don't like it, I can sand it off and try again. But what I what I did was I basically got the shape I wanted. I'm a little bit too fat in here right now. But what I did was I basically got the shape I wanted. Then I took my pencil, like this here, my compass, and I, I opened it up until my pencil was just about doing what my free hand was doing. And then I used this compass to give me a real good, perfect circle that I would cut by. And then I did the same thing in here to get my inside swing. And then I did the same thing here for this small bump. I used the compass to get this small bump perfect. And the same thing here. And I just kept opening and closing so that my compass would kind of match what my free hand was doing, but give me a much more perfect... Uh out on the bandsaw and I find it's always good to stay off of your line so that when you start to sand you can sand right up to your line so I'm going to touch it up as much as I can on the uh, this wide sander here So much on this thing because just of the way it's uh, positioned, but you can get some of these areas out uh, pretty good. And then the rest, believe it or not, it's pretty soft pine, so you can do a lot of it by hand, and I'll show you how I do that too. If you look real right in here, you can see where I didn't do that good of a job. See how coarse that cutting is from the bandsaw? What happened was I kind of overdid a little bit on the sander, and I kind of lost my profile, so... Uh, 
So I'm going to have to doctor that up a little bit, but that's not that big of a deal. I've got this little round thing. You can have a uh, little dowel or something round that's about this size. I, in fact, I use a dowel for this smaller profile. But if you put this in here and you work that just a few minutes, you can get pretty much most of that bandsaw cuts right out of there. But what you want to do on a lot of these things is you want to try to keep these shoulders. You see these little shoulders here? That's what makes a nice detail sometimes. And what I'll do there is I'll take a block with sandpaper and try to keep going into that shoulder to maintain that shoulder. So you can see where I've already got in just a minute or two, I've got a lot of this out. So I'll work that and get that nice. And then the next step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pencil, and you see how I cut a relief down in here? I'm going to kind of do the same thing. Whatever this profile is, I'll copy it. But what I want to do is uh, just kind of sketch it out with your hand. It's not a big deal. And then maybe put a shoulder into another one. Keep your shoulders and then do another one. chose a kind of dark stain that would uh, mask the different types of wood that I have here and I thought it would probably blend overall. It's kind of a dark brown. As you can see how dark that's going to come up. Just about what I wanted. brackets are going to be so high up uh, that I'm go what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a screw at an angle and just run that screw from the top down. Now you could put these up with brackets. You could do it a number of different ways, little L brackets or whatever. This I think will work out. In fact, it worked out pretty good over there. So I'm just going to pick a spot up from the bottom and just kind of come in. See how that came through the top? There's one. There's two. Okay, now we bought some of these ends here uh, to go at the end of the pipe. These were cheap enough, and it would have been uh, too much trouble for me to try to make these without a lathe and all that. And uh, so we bought these, and I'll show you how I'm going to make these work out. Now, when I took these out of the box, these came with an extra ring. If I had a really big pipe, I would probably use them, but I think uh, without the ring, it'll look better. What I did was I took some wood and just kind of ran it through the table saw just to kind of cut the corners off enough to fit in there. This thing doesn't really have to hold anything. It's just going to set up in there. And then I drilled a hole in the end of it. I just screw this wood in there. If it ever came loose or I had a problem where it was getting loose, I could just squirt a little silicone or something in there and slide it right back in. That would lock it in place. So that will just sit in there just like that to hold it in that pipe. And I think that will work out fine. So... Let's get these brackets hung up and then get our men, uh, measurements so we can cut for uh, the pipe. All right. I put my three-inch screw in there. I'm going to set it up my lines right here. 
I'm actually going to hold it a little bit above my line because I know when I tighten that thing up, it's going to kind of pull it down a little bit. So let's see what happens.